And let's cross live to Gerard Road, Ikoyi, where our Irish correspondent Adefemi Akinsoyo, who's been covering the rescue operation in Lagos, is reporting live for us. Uh, Adefemi, I want to say thank you very much for joining us here on Newsday. And uh, we just had a report from you earlier on, which states the number of people that have been rescued and also the number of fatalities we've actually um, witnessed, uh, the mortalities that we've actually witnessed in this particular collapse. Talk to us about that. Is there any update on the numbers? Speak to us. Thank you very much, Aaron. Well, as we're hearing, it is uh, very sad news to report that uh, the death toll as it stands is still 36 people dead, nine people alive. That means that no survivors have been pulled for more than 24 hours. And that, of course, is harrowing news. It's heartbreaking news for many of the people still standing here. If we break those numbers down a bit more, we know that of the people who have survived as yet, those nine people, one of them has been a woman, uh, eight of them men, and of the dead, three women and 33 men dead. So it is very, very stark hearing to hear those numbers. Uh, I'd imagine that many people would have expected the death toll to rise. Uh, in amongst that, expectation is also uh, a lot of pain. Just behind me there, um, surrounded by the rest of the press, there is a man who says that he believes his son uh, is dead, has died in this collapse and wants to know uh, what, the, what the latest is. Uh, he doesn't believe that his son is among the people who um, have already been exhumed from the building. And while he is hopeful, of course, that uh, there would be a miracle in bringing his son out of life. He just wants to know what the status is. And it's a good time for him to be asking that question because the Lagos State Governor is around. We were just with the Governor uh, some moments ago when he igno formally inaugurated the six-member panel who will who, are, who have been tasked to investigate the collapse of this building. And it is a possibility, as the Governor put it, that they could recommend charges. They have been mandated uh, to compile their investigations within 30 days. However, uh, as we were hearing today, it is possible that should they need a an extension on those 30 days, it's likely to be given. This is the gentleman I was talking about just there. He's uh, approaching the counselling section. Uh, the section uh, is here, a part of the information desk. There's a counselling section, a medical section, and of course an information desk for people to log, formally log the names and photographs of their missing and also receive any type of medical attention they may need. There are blood pressure machines and I'd imagine that with this gentleman who's distraught over his son, he will be getting some counselling from the Lagos State professionals stood there. I did say that the Lagos State Governor is on ground and he's, he has gone inside the gates. He is inspecting the building. He is joined by the Deputy Lagos State Governor too and it's expected that they will come out probably to continue talking about the investigative panel and hopefully give many of the families here uh, a bit of information and hopefully a bit more hope about what is going on here. It is, it is heartbreaking here. So sad. All right, Adifemi, um, permit me, um, talk to me right now. We hear that um, some of the relatives of the victims there are dissatisfied with the level of work. They claim uh, the rescue effort is slow. Talk to us about this. Have you heard any service concerning that? In, absolutely. So in amongst the the complaints about the pace of the search and the rescue mission. There are also complaints about the heavy handedness of the machinery. Just before we went over to uh, Fallon Wall for that press conference on the investigative panel, we did see quite animated scenes. A woman who has been here for the past two days waiting for news and updates on her brother who was believed to be among the people in the lower parts of the building when it came down. She came out of the gates crying, very upset at the scenes that she had seen. She said that with the machine those excavation machines continuing to dig into the rubble, she believed there was a possibility that should there be any survivors still there, they could be injured by the excavation process itself. So it is very, very difficult sites to see, most especially for the people who are so desperate for information, so much so that they've gone to the foot of the collapse just to see if they can hear anything, see anything. And so it is very painful, as they've described it, watching those machines dig into the rubble because each time those machines 
dig in, they believe there's a possibility that their loved ones could be injured. The woman did say that if, if her loved one isn't already dead, even though she hopes that's not the case, perhaps it could be the machines itself that would kill him. So obviously, very, very uh, debilitating scenes here, as it were, uh, on the scene of this downed building. I mean, the, the, the call is, is plenty. The calls for more information, calls for a faster process. And, and I'd imagine a, a call for some form of a smooth transition as people continue searching for survivors unearthing bodies. As it stands now, as I said, it was just yesterday evening, it marked the first day where night had fallen and the survivor hadn't been pulled from the rubble. Hope isn't all lost though, but this harsh reality is that as time ticks on and as as they approach ground zero, the likelihood of more bodies is uh, expected to be the case. You know, you also know that there was no formal manifest. No one knows exactly how many people were in the building or on the premises when the, uh, the structure came down. Nobody knows the names of them, which is why this information desk was set up so people could formally register their missing, find out a bit more about what is happening in terms of identifying the dead and identifying survivors. People have been told that they need to go to Baghdad General Hospital. That's where the mortuary is for the victims. Uh, are associated with this down building, but many of them have gone and not received the answers that they were looking for. We've all seen Aditukombo Oyotunji's report on the hospital. Of course, um, a little bit of good news seeing those survivors laid in their beds, but as it stands, nine survivors, 36 people dead. Really, really harrowing stuff and great work out there, Femi. Um, we actually remember the uh, Lagos State Governor yesterday um, speaking about the tools being used to excavate the, um, the bodies in the scene. And he did say that they were trying their best to be as careful yes. as possible and professional. But I also want to talk about the other two buildings. I know there's a lot of concentration right now on the wreckage as it stands, but we do know those other two buildings uh, withstood quite an aftershock um, from the downing of the 21 stories. I'm wondering if there's any discussion about what the fate of these two buildings will be and um, whether or not safety precautions are being taken, especially since there are quite a lot of people in the area still. Mm. How are many people, I'd imagine, are also wanting to find out what the future fate of those two buildings would be. No confirmation as yet, but you'd imagine that between people, it would be an expectation that the buildings would be brought down under a controlled demolition because, you know, one thing that we can't deny is that both buildings would have been compromised by the impacts of this down building. Again, we haven't had any confirmation as to the future of the two structures still standing, but it is just a representation of how how much development was happening and how how fast that pace of development was going on and perhaps uh, perhaps many people have put it that could be a reason why uh, certain safety protocols weren't followed and that's exactly why the investigative panel have been put together to find out exactly how we got here and if uh, any crimes have been committed you know when we look at the the structure it is a very stark and harsh reminder of, about what has happened here and how much life has been lost, how much life has been impacted, but also, secondary, how much money has been lost. You, you, you can only imagine the amount of money uh, being poured into and invested into this building, uh, into the development here. Ikoyi is uh, a very uh, notorious for having the most expensive real estate in all of Lagos. Indeed, most of Nigeria, if not Nigeria too. So you can imagine the amount of money being poured into this project. High rises do line the streets here in front of me, to the side of me, and of course, right behind me. But I'd imagine, that while we do wait for confirmation on what happens with those two buildings, it is expected that they may well be brought down under a controlled demolition because the integrity of both buildings would have been compromised by the downed building. Um, I definitely permit me, as we enter day four of this rescue effort, um, talk to me. This has been a very faceless um, project, so to speak. No one has been able to put a name to the project. Is that change? Are we expect that? To, are we expecting it to change anytime soon? Whereby we begin to say, okay, this company or this individual is the one we can hold responsible for what has happened. There are names that have been put out. 
for sure there have been names. Four score homes, of course, Femi or Shibona. But the question is how many more names, how many more companies are associated with this? As it stands now, that level of information has been quite quiet. We haven't really had much formal business presence here. People who had invested, people who were representing four score homes, not really heard any of a much of a public statement. Most of what you're seeing on the ground here, press, family members, loved ones, bystanders, were not that much of a professional presence. Not many people wanting to attach their names, as it were, to this collapsed building. And you can obviously understand why, but that doesn't really, you know, tender uh, a, a proper excuse. Many people would like to know what the professional standing is, what people, what the people who are responsible for this building have to say about its down, its downing. You know, and it's, it's very hard to identify who we can approach. We have been asking questions and we have been approaching people as much as we can just to understand, even if you are a family member or a loved one, what did your family member think they were doing here? Who did they believe they were working for? The name that we continue hearing is that of the property developer, Femi Oshibono, who is believed to have been within the building when it came down, believed to unfortunately still be there. This vehicle behind me here, this vehicle behind me here, this black one is, is expected to be uh, among the fleet of cars that would have brought him here or that of a personal acquaintance of his, a personal uh, assistant. So that is again another harsh remi reminder about how close the proximity of this downing is to this collapse rather is to all of the people in this district Ikoyi, of course is a it, albeit small when you compare it to different places in lagos but it does have quite a mighty presence and since monday since the the building collapsed there's been a strong presence of people on the streets most of them very frustrated as you've put it with the rate of uh, the discovery the rate of the search and rescue mission and also the use of the machines uh, before we left to go and speak to the governor as it pertained to the formation and the inauguration of that investigative panel, we did hear from the NEMA leader who said that uh, special products... Let's take a look at the gentleman here. It's unclear who these people are or what relationship they have to the building, but they may well be uh, people who are associated with the professional side of this building. We will be approaching them. They have been uh, lingering on since the early hours of this morning, and we will be able to approach them a little later to get some information. But, you know, back to the topic at hand. With the level of uh, sophisticated machinery being used, uh, we have been hearing that uh, there are some sort of scanners being deployed since yesterday uh, that have uh, been used to scan for any type of body temperature or sound or any type of human uh, life activity. As it stands, that obviously hasn't been successful because the toll, the number of people who have survived hasn't changed since we heard it was nine and that hasn't changed today and also didn't change at all yesterday. Today. Uh, unfortunately, as I've put it, only thing that has changed is the number of people dead. And as it stands, that's 36. <sighs> yeah, Femi, as, as we look, let's talk about the rescue operations. The day before and, uh, well, two days before, we saw the presence of the military and such. Um, we're wondering how long they will continue the rescue operations for. How long will the search and rescue continue for? Um, is there a given time uh, or day before they um, completely call everything off and start attending to the victims? As it stands, according to the Lagos State Emergency Management Authority agency, rather, LASEMA say they will not stop until they get to ground zero. How long that will take, they haven't told us. They don't know clearly. And that's because the work is ongoing. It is very difficult at this point to understand or know when they will identify a time where they resign their fate and continue to focus their efforts on the people who survive. But it is also important to note that a lot of these agencies are tasked with different levels of work. NEMA, La SEMA, they are here for the emergency management of it all, here to oversee the recovery process, the search and rescue process. That is their priority and is that of the medical professionals, the hospitals who are tasked with obviously the treatment and of course the guardianship of corpses that have been brought into their custody. So right now there is a division of labor, a division of powers, each body, each agency focused on its own work, but they're all tied together with the notion that more people should be on earth and hopefully when they are on earth, everyone is hoping that they will be found alive. All right, uh, Defemi, just behind you there, I'm seeing some sort of free movement in and out of the site of this wreckage and this 
building collapse. Talk to us about it. I would believe that it should have been cornered off or uh, probably some restrictions should have been put on those who have been let in and out yes. of that particular place for safety one and also that it, it might at, at some point turn to a place of criminal investigation. If I, I I'd imagine, uh, Aaron, I understand exactly what you're saying. It's very possible, though that isn't been the confirmed case now, but it is very possible that those scenes could turn into a crime scene very soon. And in the meantime, I can, of course, imagine that the grounds would be cordoned off. I was there yesterday. We will also continue going in and out. People have been allowed largely to enter that premises, just not with any forms of uh, cameras. The press can't take any microphones or their bigger cameras with them. But, you know, if you walk individually, you can go up to the foot of the collapse. There is tape cordoning off the area, but it is... It has been quite free lately for people to go in. Most of the people you see going in are people who have loved ones they believe to still be trapped inside. And it was one of those women who came out earlier in tears, very upset with how the excavation machines were going into the rubble. She, she was adamant that she believed that if someone was alive at this point inside that building, perhaps the force of the machinery could injure them further. Of course, none of us know that to be true. None of us know or what the status is in terms of survivors, whether or not the people still trapped inside are alive, despite the level of hope many people have. But yes, the, the grounds have not been formally uh, cordoned off yet. People continuing to freely walk in and out of that area, Hawa and Aaron. We will continue to keep hope alive. Thank you, Aide Femi Akinsoya, for that wonderful report.